Hey everyone, winter growing continues. Does it look different in here? Let me take you on a little tour of what's going on with me here in central Arkansas. One of the things that have changed is that I had two platforms here last time and now I've added a third and that's to expand the, the growing season for the winter because I'm going to grow the strawberries in the spring. Can you grow squash directly in nutrient? Well, I'm trying it. This is composted rice holes and the squash was planted directly in this and then put in this gutter. And let me show you what the roots look like on it right now. This is a vining squash. See down there? Now it's discolored like this a little bit because of the compacted rice holes. And you'll see all the debris floats to the bottom, so uh, we don't have an issue with it returning back to the pump. And I've grown like this all last year and this year, so I know it works well. And it doesn't create a funky nastiness with composted rice holes like it would if you use soil. And so you've seen the roots for this and this is like I said a vining squash so right now in this little area that seems to be doing okay if it grows and continues to do well I will string it up like I do tomatoes continuing with squash I also planted some in directly in these little buckets there's three plants in this now and I will curb that to probably two. But when you plant seeds, you want to make sure that in order to get two, you plant three or more. And so I had 100% germination. This one was planted originally. And then I planted these two a little bit later. And you can see this one's doing very well in this pot. Here is another squash growing in in the uh, net cup and you can see that that one's growing nicely as well. Looking down this line of my small pots like this one I've got a bush green bean growing and I put two in each one of these little pots and right now they seem to be doing great. Five plant or five pots with two beans in each one. Also planted some brassicas. Here's some broccoli for you. I will call that to one in each little pot. So they seem to be doing okay. Got a cauliflower in that one, in the little pot there, and a cauliflower on the other side of the bean there, and they seem to be doing okay. I planted three pots of a tomato that I crossed here. Here's one. And I planted these because I didn't think that these were going to sprout, so those are coming up as well. But that's a cross that I made. And I hope that turns out well. Some cabbage growing in this one. Come on over right next to it. Got some broccoli. Another cabbage. Last year I had real good success growing carrots in composted rice holes. And here they are again, the current status. I only planted one bucket of these. And I even decided to try to give corn a shot. Corn in the winter. Wouldn't that be nice if that happened? I really don't expect it to perform, but we're not always about trying to squeeze the best out of everything. We just like to experiment here. In this pot, I've got some baby 
pak choy. Those are the cute little ones you can get from Chinese restaurants. Add them in that one, in that one. I'm even going to try to grow cucumbers. Now they have sprouted. I planted directly into the bucket and both have come up. And I'm going to keep both of those. I'm not going to call that down to one because I know two will grow out of a bucket from experience. I've got in this particular bucket baby bok choy. So that's a lot of growing in a small space. You've got a central space here with the buckets and you've got a platform on either side. And why am I growing that way? Well, I want to maximize the use and space of the greenhouse. I want to grow a great variety of things in the greenhouse. I want to plant succession in succession. That way as one is being harvested I have some behind it coming up so that's one of the main reasons I'm also planting this way I want to test the limits of what can be grown and in what seasons by experimenting I want to find out what vegetables can grow in what types of medium if they can grow directly in nutrient if they have to have some sort of organic material do they even need organic material at all? I've got an experiment going on with this one. How densely can they grow if they receive the proper nutrients? That's one of the things I'm working on here. Last year, I found that Alamo turnip greens, they grow really good densely. So do spinach and others getting a jump on seed collection. These are onions that I grew last year and onions biennially means every other year if you let them grow they'll produce a seed stalk. So I'm growing these. Once they produce a seed stalk I will put them outside and attempt to have them pollinated in the spring and collect my own seeds. I want to combine methods of growing. We've got an, a hydroponic function here, a drip system, along with organic material, along with, you got a drip here, inorganic material, and the roots are collected in here. So you've got sort of a deep water with flowing aerated nutrient here. You've got a drip, which drips into it from the top, and you have the organic material. I want to grow spring and summer crops in the middle of winter. We've got tomatoes and green beans, for example. I'm using a heater. It is set on the second setting, which is 700 watts roughly. So that's equivalent to, you know, 700 watt light bulbs. It only turns on when the temperature goes below 55. So during the day, as you can see it blinking there, you should be able to, it says 68 degrees. So right now it is near 70 degrees and it is quite cold outside. I want to conserve as much as I can the water coming in as you see there is coming from the storage barrels above it generally trickles in like that while it's pumping which it is now I've got two little aerators going in there where the pump is this bucket is covered with uh, it is weed fabric basically. I found that to be a good filtration system for solids. Not minuscule particles, but basic solids. So as the nutrient returns from the platforms here, as you can see dripping down, 
it hits the side of the bucket and the water that comes up from the pump back to the system is pretty much free of any kind of debris. The nutrients are a little discolored from the composter rice holes, but there's absolutely no smell um, and I found that it works really, really well. And this is my uh, second year growing this way. I'm using quarter inch soaker hose wrapped by a T here coming in with quarter inch line off of half inch poly here. And that seems to work pretty good. It's on a timer. And you can see there's dripping down. And it's keeping the top of this pretty moist, but the timer is set to go off for 15 minutes every other hour. So every two hours, it runs for 15 minutes. Can you hear that hissing? That's what happens when the timer cuts off. So what I'm trying to do here is balance it. I don't want this to remain wet and grow mold. I want it to dry out. So I have seen where some people stick a tube in there and run it directly into the tube where it's underneath the surface. I may do that, um, but right now I'm going to give this a try. We'll see how that works. If you look down the side of the buckets, you'll see that I've got a little blue tape here. That is painter's tape, and I write with a Sharpie on that on the non-sun side so it doesn't fade out and that tells me what's in the bucket. I also have the half inch poly coming down and there's a hole drilled in each bucket and it goes through into the soaker hose waters and that also keeps this in place. It keeps it nice and neat looking and in place. On the very bottom of the poly is a line that comes out and it's branched by T into each one of the side gutters and it fills with a variable adjusting drip emitter here. Now that can unscrew where it you know it, it can set you can set the variance of how full each one of these gets with that. It's still dripping even though the pump is off. Now I call these platforms fawn platforms if you look at my previous videos. Fawn stands for flowing aerated wicking nutrient and that is still true. It is still true that the water coming out of the nutrient tank is flowing via these little things here and um, it's aerated coming into this into each one of these. I keep pump uh, keep it aerated right at the pump, and so everywhere it goes in in the entire system, it's aerated water. The various platforms, like even this one here, using composted rice holes, wicks up from the nutrient, and so that is also. I would say it's similar to deep water culture um, and it's also um, sort of similar to Larry Hall's rain gutter, rain gutter grow system except that he uses regular water and it's not flowing and it doesn't have nutrient in it so I did like that method a couple years ago a couple three years ago but I found in the heat that the plants here in Arkansas when you get 95 plus it, it just wasn't very efficient and the water uh, did not uh, it, it got heated up and it just wasn't a good system overall for here and so I, I when I dabbed dabbled into hydroponics um, via MHP gardener when he did his tomatoes mostly tomatoes I thought I'd give that a try and that's how this kind of developed into what I'm doing now. It's kind of a, a hybrid of hydroponics, drip systems, 
sort of deep water culture, sort of rain gutter growth system. It's just kind of something that's developed. And I also use organic material instead of perlite. Now I believe that if you don't have rice holes, like I'm using, that sphagnum peat moss would also do you very well. I've got a light up there hanging and it's set on a timer. It comes on just before dark and stays on for a few hours. Um, and that's just so in case I'm still working here. Don't really have to have it on a timer. Could put it on my switch. You can see up there. And also is the fan. And the reason why I put the the uh, light on a timer is because the fan needs to stay on constantly even during the night to circulate the heat. And now you see the whole thing is open. That's to remove moisture and allow less use of the heater. Things don't get overheated. Things don't get too cold when it's open. It just kind of radiates from inside the greenhouse and it's quite warm in here. That's pretty much it folks. I will uh, keep, you, keep you coming along with me as this goes through the winter. I hope you enjoy it and if you like anything I do just subscribe below and uh, I'll take you with me. Till next time. Bye.